Is the fact that people don't report the methods not the consequence of the fact that they actually mm -hmm. don't know which methods to use? Yes, I think you're exactly right there. Um, so Vary has published a nice paper highlighting the problems of poor reporting in narrative synthesis. And I think in that she concludes that um, really, how can they possibly know what to do when there's just not very much clear guidance or familiarity with um, this as a method. So we're hoping that um, this swim work will help at least define part of what has been used um, or what has been sort of come under the term narrative synthesis until recently. And um, do you know where you can read that paper? On, tell us. On the swim website. Yeah. Um, then do you have any guidance recommendation which type of narrative synthesis should be method if it should be used which guidance do you have any recommendation type of narrative? oh that a repeat of that question so i think so i think it sounds as though bert is asking a question and has maybe had a read through of the either the bmj paper or the chapter 12 which is about reporting other methods of synthesis which was um, authored by Joe McKenzie and Sue Brennan. And I think it really depends on the type of data that you have. Um, so I think in that um, chapter, they sort of set out in a bit of an order of what they would be recommending. Um, uh, but when we've been looking at Cochrane reviews, certainly the most common approach is to really base it on effect direction. Although it's not been clearly reported, effectively people are often um, doing a synthesis based on whether or not there was an effect or not. Um, and also people very often incorporate statistical significance into that, which in the chapter is highlighted as being quite problematic. Um, whoops, next question. Thank you for sharing your swimwears. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm concerned about the promotion of vote counting as a valid option when we have warned, warned students against vote counting. So that's from Andrew Booth. So yeah, I think this is an interesting question. So vote counting is a term that has been um, used as a sort of pariah and people have, as you say, when we're teaching, it's often, I've had a slide that says, you know, you don't vote count. But I think um, in the chapter by Joe and Sue, they have used the term vote counting, but saying there are different, there's different flavours. I've heard Joe say, you know, there's different flavours of ice cream and there's different flavours of vote counting and some are better than others. And some are really terrible and shouldn't be used, especially where they rely on statistical significance. Um, and some may be okay. So um, it is a term that is now used in the Cochrane Handbook. Yeah. Next question. Oh, we, oh if we click it there. Yeah. Is part of the challenge that narrative synthesis is generally presented as the second best option? Yeah, I think that's probably right. Um, I think it definitely is um, a sort of I think and, and I and I think people will have different views about this. Um and I think, you know, if you read that paper by John Ewan you just, you know, um and I think the sort of Cochrane approach would be you really want to do meta analysis if at all possible. And and that makes sense really. You know, it's a really useful and valuable and powerful method. Um but I suppose, you know, certainly in my background where we're working in public health you want to be able to make rigorous use of the best available evidence. Um, and I think, um, I don't think this is covered that well in the SWIM guidance, because I think we focused very much on how you synthesize effect data. But I think within the wider kind of house of narrative approaches, um, there's much more work to be done on how you can use narrative approaches to incorporate more complex aspects of the data and, and, and write that into your narrative. So I don't really have um, a clear answer for you, Simon, because I think probably it's a bit of more research needed. <laughs> I 
and there will be different views about you know that um will we just keep going yeah um so oops in your work did you uh, Daryl, sorry can people see the questions or should i read them out uh, you should read them out read them out okay so the next question is in your work did you come across conduct guidance for those instances where there is just one study so not so meta-analysis not possible no <laughs> i think I, um i think if you only have one study i'm not quite sure you can't really do any synthesis of that so there's nothing really to synthesize mm -hmm. um yeah mm -hmm. so the next question um do the resources or training materials include some good examples of SWIM? Barry, do you want to talk about that? Well, yes, in the paper, in the supplementary files of the paper, we've provided examples to the SWIM reporting items. And where possible, we found real life examples, but it was actually quite tricky. Well, it's not surprising because there was no clear guidance of what to do. Then people were just doing their best. We all are doing our best. So occasionally we had to make a couple of hypothetical examples up or occasionally we had to add a little bit of detail into the example. Um, but in that freely available BMG paper in the supplementary files we do provide exam good examples of SWIM. But finding full reviews where people had been completely clear in the way that we eventually worked out would be the best way to be clear. That was quite difficult to find Full, full reviews that were um, good examples of it. But as I say, people are, we're all just trying to do our best, and that was because it hadn't been thrashed out what was required until now. Okay, so we'll go on to the next question. What are the differences between SWIM and mixed method synthesis or other qualitative evidence synthesizing, qualitative evidence synthesizing methods? So it's a, it's a good question. Um, I think in SWIM we're very much just focusing on trying to improve transparency for those reviews of quantitative effect data where you can't do a meta-analysis. So I think um, there's more work to be done on looking at how to better report maybe mixed method synthesis and but there are already reporting guidelines for synthesis of qualitative data. Um, NTREC. Um, so I think that's, yeah, that's that. I mean, I think we've had a lot of discussion within our group about the, the SWIM, obviously, because we've been working on it for two or three years. Um, and I think we've um, often said the SWIM guideline and the reporting items in it really could apply to a synthesis of intervention effects regardless of the type of synthesis that you end up doing. So I think we kind of agreed that even if you were doing a meta-analysis, the reporting items were still relevant. Um, and, and the reason that pro happened probably is because although the PRISMA um, guideline is being updated, um, and the current one that's available didn't really talk much about transparent reporting of the actual synthesis approach or synthesis methods. Um, so, yeah, we'd be interested to have a bit more discussion about that once we see what Prisma, what the new Prisma looks like. Okay, the next question is, um, I wonder if you would say that SWIM whoops, offers an alternative to reviews for public health where heterogeneity is important. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's an alternative. I think it's hopefully a step forward to help authors and readers to know the sorts of things they should be reporting. Um, and it points people in hopefully the right direction in terms of some guidance on, on conduct as well. Um, yeah. So then the next question, would it be helpful for Cochrane Reviews that use SWIM to be tagged accordingly? Um, and yeah, I suppose you mean. I wonder if you mean in the the way that they're kind of annotated and indexed. Yeah, 
Well, certainly we would find it useful because we found it difficult to identify <laughs> the reviews that we wanted to look at in more detail. But yeah, it could be. Okay, from Gemma Villanueva. Does the SWIM guideline also cover challenges of using greed? Not really, but we I think point we so we do mention that um you would want to assess the synthesized evidence and body of evidence um in some form and to assess overall certainty. Um, and we point people to greed, but we don't really give any more information about that. We acknowledge the challenge of yeah. dealing with yeah. greed. Okay, so from Marwa Anas, where can we find more details about the methods of conducting narrative synthesis, not only reporting. So I think um, we've been trying to say that you know narrative synthesis is quite a difficult thing to define, and it means lots of different things to different people. In terms of the conduct for synthesis without meta-analysis of quantitative effect data, I think we would direct you to chapter 12 of the Crockett Handbook and the other resources that are referenced in the SWIM um, guideline paper in the BMJ and also on the SWIM website. And then maybe this is a last question. Oh no, <laughs> um, from Simon in the metadata for. Oh right, okay. That so Simon Lewin asked the question about whether or not um, the reviews in Cochrane could be tagged to whether or not they've used SWIM, and he's saying that it could be in the metadata for indexing the reviews. Which yeah, that sounds like could be quite a useful suggestion. And then a question from Jennifer Evans. Are there any issues with summarising the synthesis without meta-analysis in the summary versions of the review? Does SWIM cover this? Um, we don't really cover that. <laughs> um, I don't see why there would be any issues any more than it sort of takes quite a lot of time to bring together data regardless of the synthesis methods unless you've only had a couple of outcomes to report. But yeah, we don't really cover that um, in our guideline. So the time is coming up probably to the end of the session and the time that we've allocated. Um, certainly from Vary and I, I think we'd like to say thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, we hope you've found it useful. Thanks for all the really good questions. We do plan the second webinar um, in a month's time. We also use the questions that you've asked and put them together in a frequently asked questions section in the SWIM website. 